I thought maybe we could start all of this by first doing some quick intros. So I'll just uh, kick it off. I'm head in integrations here at uh, Chainlink. Been here for two years working with DeFi projects and uh, blockchain such as uh, Solana. Maybe Anatoly, you want to describe yourself? Um, so folks, I'm Anatoly, uh, co-founder, CEO of Solana Labs. That's the company that developed the Solana protocol. Um, I'm an operating systems engineer by trade, so really just think of me as an engineer. Awesome to be here. Perfect. Anatoly, I thought we could uh, kickstart this discussion with maybe you telling us a bit more about Solana and what uh, really differentiates it in this ecosystem. Well, um, some interesting things that you know come a lot from my background. I spent my career at Qualcomm. If you guys don't know what that company does, if you have a cell phone, there's probably some some hardware that was built by Qualcomm in that phone. And I worked on optimizations there for over a decade. So when I had the idea to start Solana, I was really spurred by this Eureka moment where I had realized that you can use a verifiable delay function as a source of time outside of consensus, just like CDMA, LTE, TDMA, cellular net protocols use time to synchronize towers and, and mobile phones. So that was really kind of what, what kickstarted it. And that's a really unique property of Solana than any other network out there. And what makes it unique from a design perspective is that uh, looks and feels like a real-time uh, radio protocol slash real-time operating system. These are the things that, you know, play, you know, 60 frames per second, high definition video. They're designed to be extremely fast and high throughput um, at the cost of hardware. So obviously, if you know anything about Solana, you know that it's, we don't shard, uh, but our nodes are expensive. So you can kind of play around with it yourself if you want to by going to break.solana.com and uh, smash the keyboard and see transactions fly and get confirmed. Perfect, awesome. Yeah, so I can say that the uh, trending has been integrating over on Solana. So we're currently running on uh, testnet and we did see a lot of uh, differences from user and um, developer experience, right? On our side, what we weren't used to is uh, fast pace of the blockchain. So right now we're able to put sub-second updates on the chain, which when you're putting data changes everything. Obviously on our side, we are putting data for a while, price data on Ethereum, on um, different blockchains, right? But the rate of updates we can get onto Solana is faster than anything we, we've seen before, right? So the data quality we're able to put is much, much more accurate. There is a big difference between putting sub-second data from you know, extremely high frequency um, data points for prices than one data point every 1% deviation, let's say, which is what we're kind of forced to do right now. So yeah, I can say it's been a great experience. Also the thing that developers will probably notice is um, Rust, basically it's a Rust programming language for smart contracts, which obviously does uh, make a difference and I think it does offer very interesting tools for developers. Uh, what, what would you say, so uh, Anatoly, about uh, the REST experience on Solana? Yeah, a lot of that also comes from my, you know, I spent my career in C, C++, and um, when I had a chance to build a new, you know, a new operating system, a new framework, Rust was a natural choice because it is such a great systems language with really strong compiler support for safety and correctness. Um, it's it's been voted by GitHub engineers, like by GitHub developers, as the number one language loved language. Uh, I think it's uh, in the top ten of the most used languages in GitHub. Um, it's really hard to build a, to start a new programming language that makes it that far. You know, think of it as 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 hard as building a blockchain, as hard as you know building a crypto in general, um, because it requires adoption across a wide variety of use cases by a wide variety of skill sets and engineers. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm in also just as impressed of, of Rust's success as, as a crypto as a general. So in, in itself, it's pretty remarkable achievement. And we're happy with it from the, really from this idea that you can write in a modern language that has, that doesn't have garbage collection, that doesn't have, 
uh, dynamic execution, you can actually use, you know, the kind of performance that you expect as a C developer, but with the same safety and next generation language features that you get out of something like Go or, you know, like a more sophisticated languages, even like OCaml or, or Haskell. Yeah, I would say what's interesting about Rust, what I've seen from the outside, that it's basically setting a standard, right? You're not siloed in your own ecosystem when you code in Rust. Like people are using Rust for WASM codes, they're using Rust in many different applications. And the fact that you're able to leverage this ecosystem is probably going to make it much easier to get people building on top of Solana, right? So people who are in the traditional world, very intelligent people building infrastructure, building different types of applications, we'll have a much easier time getting onboarded there. Uh, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, the, the key thing with, with like any kind of like platform is that can an engineer self-serve, right? Can they actually, like when they're faced with a problem, can they Google and figure it out and, and move forward? And for that to be possible, you need effectively network effects. You just need enough stuff out there, examples, libraries, and JavaScript. Is like beautiful at that, right? NPM has everything in the world implemented at this point. Um, Rust is is getting pretty close in terms of systems languages, um, and we love the the package manages management system for smart contracts because we see now that users that are building smart contracts on Solana are able to use that same kind of like NPM style. Let's write a package that's commonly used across a bunch of. Uh, you know, a bunch of developers use it across a bunch of smart contracts. And now that allows the whole ecosystem to leverage and allows the next developer to self-serve and figure it out because they can Google for it and, and figure out what dependencies they need and move forward. Um, so those kinds of like network effects are, are really powerful when, when they work right. Yeah, fully agree. I think it's all about uh, network effects, not only at the... Uh... Um, uh, adoption side, right? But also there are many different types of network effects. You have, for instance, validators on your networks. So you have node operators. Uh, the fact that so many people start running nodes and start sharing resources and best practices, I mean, you basically see a whole ecosystem grow and you don't need to control or to, to help the, the growth anymore. You don't need to send resources. People start learning, they start sharing and uh, growth just accelerates, right? So that's what you've seen with our users with our load operators and even our data providers. And I think you 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 see the same with validators. Uh, I was looking at the tools being built on Solana by validators, explorers, wallet, all of this stuff. I mean, that's why network effects and standards are so important in my view. Um, so Anatoly, regarding the chaining integration, we're probably going to go, well, we're aiming to go to mainnet on Q4, right, on Solana. We've gotten insane demand uh, from hundreds of applications. Lots of people are building on top of Solana, synthetic platforms, futures platforms, DEXs, lending, basically any DeFi use case you could think of is building on top. And everyone is featuring some really interesting stuff. They want super high frequency. They want super low fees, um, non-existing fees most of the time. They want to go to Forex, equities, all of this stuff. T tell us a bit more about what really what excites you about this ecosystem that's being built? Um, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the number of developers that are basically, they quit their cushy jobs at Google and decided to go eat glass and be a CEO of a startup and, and really grind out product market fit and, and build something new and unique. Um, and in my mind, that is really like the most important thing. Can we, can we get, you know, the next generation of builders to, come and join crypto and start building products for millions of users, because this is where you're actually going to get adoption. You need somebody that's constantly building products that do create some value for the end user. You know, it's not the platforms, right? It's not Oracle's don't do it. Plus layer ones don't do it. It's actually the, the, the folks building those products. So to me, that that's really the most exciting thing about this. Um, I think finance and, and DeFi, is almost like the obvious kind of use case. You know, when, when people discovered cement, they started building bricks out of cement because this is how they knew to build houses. They knew how to build houses out of bricks. So that's that's what they did. And we see finance as a very obvious brick that we can build on these systems. What I'm really excited about is when we get all these amazing founders, they each one of them, you know, get a few million users. All of a sudden there's 100, 200 million users on the same network. 
And this is where the skyscrapers are going to be built, right? This is where like some of the stuff that we can't even imagine right now is going to be accomplished. So that's, that's the future I'm really uh, looking forward to. And it's right around the corner, three years, right? Like we're, we're going to see this kind of exponential growth um, in the next three years because the difference now other time in crypto like 2017 is that founders are able to join crypto and build a product and get to market in weeks and raise funding in our hackathons we saw folks know nothing about crypto really you know besides being interested in it or trading it knowing some c plus plus join solana build their application and raise funding in the span of four weeks and then start getting users like it like basically right right through the hackathon so this this kind of like iteration of actual user adoption is really critical for that for that growth um and you know the only time i remember this is being like a teenager and seeing that happen on the internet you know like in in the 90s so this is quite kind of once in a generation type of event. I'm just super excited to be a part of it. Yeah, I fully agree. I think what's what's happening, right, is that we're building platforms. In the end, Solana is a platform, Chainlink is a platform. We're giving tools to people to build the next uh, the next generation stuff, right? The next exchanges, the next leverage platforms. All of this stuff, like there is too much stuff to know, to learn for one person or one group to do it all, right? What should happen and what we're working on together is providing tools so we're providing Oracle, you're providing smart contract execution platform. We're providing these tools so that these pioneers, in a way, can go and set the frontiers of uh, innovation further and further, right? Uh, it's like in the gold rush. We're basically selling the shovels and the, <laughs> and the stuff for people <laughs> to go and dig and find the, find the next uh, gold mine, right? And the gold mine here is a use case which can change the world, right? Like uh, stuff that people can start using, whether it's DeFi, whether it's gaming, maybe. Uh, and yeah, I do share your uh, your excitement. I think it's going to be very exciting stuff coming up. And the fact that the fees are solo on Solana will allow to targeting um, you know people who were before kind of uh, closed out of this ecosystem, right? Completely siloed. Uh, I think dropping these fees and being able to offer security and affordability is a huge, huge deal here. You know. So, Agreed. Yeah, you know, like we need we need these networks to be able to handle, you know, a billion users for the developers that, that are, you know, the founders coming into the space to imagine that being possible, right? They need to feel like they can do it and, and kind of not worry about um, scaling or costs and, and really take a big, big shot at a big use case. Exactly. So beyond um, DeFi and Atoli, is there anything else that you think uh, Solana could really differentiate itself in the future? So I think, you know, what I think, what I think is that the future finance will be a critical component of these next generation use cases, but probably not in the way that you expect. You know, a Google ad is 0.2 cents of, of value being transferred. If our fees are 100 times cheaper than that, developers can start imagining social networks where tokens and the exchange of those tokens is maybe a 0.2 cent microtransaction. But because the underlying fees are much, much cheaper than that, that's actually a valuable business model that may scale when you have 10 million users, right, in the same group. Like, so those kinds of use cases are just folks haven't tried it because the market is so small. We don't have 10 million at monthly active users in crypto yet, <laughs> let alone like a uh, 10 million out of a, a larger chunk for you to build your your small social network or something like that. So what what I what I'm really excited about is people that are getting into the space and trying ideas that may not work today, but will work when we get to that like you know largest uh, market share of adoption in the world. So th those are like the things that are, um, you know, the big, sh the big shots on goal that really have uh, outlying chances of success and really like that Facebook level of adoption where, you know, I don't know if you guys remember in, in like 2003, they were gaining a million users a month. And that was kind of like jaw dropping, right? Like no nobody really expected that to be a trillion dollar company. Yeah, I think the beautiful thing here is that uh, we have all of these barriers which existed. Like, for instance, oracles can put data every seven seconds, right? Yep. And uh, users can't pay uh, like uh, cents on the dollar to get a transaction. When you lift all of these barriers, 
stuff will start appearing and use cases will start coming up without even us you know being able to 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 see what what the AI will be in the, before right like we'll be able to see all of this ecosystem grow once we see these barriers lifted and uh, kind of uh, innovation just uh, grow super quick so yeah we're okay. really looking forward to be on solana in uh, q4 and uh, start doing all of this together i have to say <laughs> same um like oracles play like such a critical role in this because the blockchain itself can never really know all the data outside of the world, right? The, this function of actually being the eyes for the smart contracts is, is like a critical piece that is quite necessary. So I'm super excited working with you guys in this high fidelity, like, you know, I think best version of Chainlink is gonna be on Solana. So I'm really excited to, for that to, to happen. Perfect, awesome. All right, Angie, I see that you're running uh, at the close. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us and uh, and talking us through this. Just to hear the opportunity of the scale of the opportunity, rather, is always amazing. And appreciate hearing from you, Anatoly. And thank you, Johan, for joining us as well. Mm -hmm.